Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a detailed look at Storm Dudley and Storm Eunice which is coming over the next few days. Now in yesterday's video we were looking at the possibility of seeing some named storms this week and the Met Office have now named Dudley and Eunice for Thursday or Wednesday into Thursday and for Thursday into Friday. Severe storms coming up. Extreme strong winds for both events and potentially for Eunice we could be seeing some significant snowfall as well. Now we don't have warnings in for snow at the moment simply because of the amount of uncertainty there is with upper air temperatures, dew points um, and um, where the precipitation is placed. So we don't have warnings for that yet but we do have yellow and amber warnings now in force for wind and we'll have a look why those warnings could be upgraded potentially to a red warning in some regions. So we'll have a look at the live radar, have a look at the precipitation we have around now, then we'll go through the weather warnings, then we'll go have a look at the uh, UK Met Office run, the Icon run, the short range high resolution models and then we'll go through the GFS and the GFS ensembles just to have a look at what we're seeing longer term. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now today you can see we do have quite a bit of precipitation around, especially across England and Wales and parts of northern Scotland, um, and it's pretty blustery out there as well, but it is nothing compared to what we could be seeing towards the end of this working week. We could be seeing severe conditions, of course. Now at the moment we do have a lot of, pl oh, plenty of showers, some heavy, um, uh, you could see some quite heavy rain and that, others lighter and just cloudy. But for many areas, it's sort of on and off. There's not that much persistent rain. There's a persistent band, of course, that is spreading through northeast England, East Anglia at the moment, but elsewhere, it's just a smackering of showers, really. So on and off dry and wet spells. Bit of wintriness over Scotland. And that snow line is going to hold across Scotland. And over the coming days, as we head towards the end of the week, it could drop as we have a bitterly cold air just to our north and our northwest. Remember, we are into sort of mid-February now, uh, and I've said this before, mid-January to around mid-February is the peak for colder conditions in the North Atlantic. So whenever we get a northerly or northwesterly wind or a southerly track jet stream like we're going to be seeing later this week, that's when we can see some surprise snow events. It's not going to be a bitterly cold spell by any means. It might only produce temporary accumulations um, at the last day or two perhaps, but it still could produce some significant conditions later this week. So we do have a look at the official Met Office Twitter page, and you can see two storms have been named. These two low-pressure systems are expected to bring strong winds and heavy rain to the UK this week, with the possibility of snow for some areas. Storm Dudley and Storm Eunice could be coming through later this week. Now, if we do have a look at the weather warnings, now you can see we do have three days of warnings, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Amber warnings on Wednesday and Thursday and the only yellow warning on Friday. Now, if we have a look at the widespread yellow warning, it's from 3 p.m. on Wednesday until 6 p.m. on Thursday. Storm Dudley will bring a period of very strong winds, which could cause some disruption late this week and during Thursday, uh, covering all of Northern Ireland, most uh, of Scotland, well, pretty much all of Scotland, most of Northern England, and a small part of North Wales. You can see high impact and pretty light, high likelihood could be upgraded to amber more widely as well. 60, 70 mile per hour in places, 80 to 90 mile per hour in a few spots, um, especially uh, over exposed coasts and hills. Now, if we look at the amber warning, Storm Dudley is expected to affect the UK on Wednesday night and Thursday, bringing a period of very strong and disruptive winds from, from 6 pm on Wednesday until 9 am on Thursday. So, severe winds over uh, the course of the evening across southern Scotland, northern England, and the tip of Northern Ireland. Very strong westerly winds are expected to develop across western Scotland and northern Northern Ireland late Wednesday and extend eastwards across southern Scotland and north, uh, northern England during the evening. 70 80 miles per hour quite widely add 80 to 90 miles per hour up is possible. High likelihood and high impact could be seeing that go to a red warning as well potentially but I think at the moment the biggest risk is actually Storm Eunice which is on Friday. Now as I said those warnings carry over until Thursday as well so it's the same warnings there but if we go have a look at Friday you can see a widespread Yellow warning covering all of Northern Ireland, all of England and Wales and parts of Southern Scotland. Now, of course, not all of these areas are going to be seeing significant winds. But the track of Storm Eunice on Friday or Thursday into Friday is very, very uncertain at this stage. Small shifts can, ch can change the snow position, the snow line, and can change the strongest winds as well. As it's likely 
southern areas of the low pressure system are going to be seeing the strongest winds and northern areas of the low pressure system are going to be seeing the snow and some models have that snow across the midlands the strongest winds across southern england others have that snow across scotland the strongest winds similar to storm dudley across northern england and it's very uh, interesting we need to keep an eye on this because if we do have a look at this yellow warning you see storm unice is likely to affect uh, uk on friday bringing a period of very strong winds that could cause significant disruption from midnight until 9 p.m but if i look at further details again again you can see 60 70 miles per hour possible over a reasonable large area so widespread strong winds small chance for a brief period of gusts reaching 80 miles per hour even in land and coastal gusts are likely to be stronger so they haven't specifically said exact winds because of course it is still a few good few days away and they're actually named the storm very early good four days ahead uh, normally it's maybe one two or three so good four days ahead for this storm um and you can see in addition to the wind there is the potential for a period of snow perhaps blizzard conditions most likely over northern england parts of scotland northern ireland and northern wales however this is very dependent on the track of the weather system and most places will see heavy rains and as i said why this could be very severe as you can see we are at the highest end of the impact zone on the warning impact matrix, lowest end of the likelihood. So once the um, likelihood of this firms up, which it will with the exact track of the storm, we're likely to see this go up. Um, and unless this storm decreases in intensity, um, and if the models do converge on uh, on exact track, it's likely we do see, once again, another amber warning. And very probably, uh, or very probable, we could be seeing another red warning um, if we stay with this high impact and that likelihood increases and that's something that i expect to be potentially issued over the next one or two days probably the latest they'd issue um, an upgrade is maybe wednesday or thursday as so they would of course want to get all uh, all the info out there to the relevant uh, people who are who are in the track of this storm so you can see severe condition condition coming massive upgrades from yesterday in terms of the warnings as the met office has now uh, has now sort of agreed um, that this storm these storms are coming uh, we have been out and looking at it over the last few days and it's always just been the potential because things can very can change significantly in sort of the five to seven day time frame but now we're only three four five days away from this is firming up um that we could be seeing a severe spell of weather later this week uh back-to-back -back storms uh, potentially amber widespread amber warnings and even some red warnings and as i said some snow as well now if we do have a look at the precipitation have a look what we're going to be seeing over the next five days or so now this is the three o'clock run from the uk Met Office run this is probably a model that they uh, Met Office did base some of their warnings on because of course they update the mornings sort of uh, the warnings late morning every day normally um, unless something severe has changed so they probably would have taken this model into account with their warnings if you do run through you can see that precipitation spreading through today slowly clearing eastwards and then by Monday evening another weather front some heavy snow across Scotland but again over higher ground just general precipitation moving through and then through Tuesday evening you start seeing another big band of precipitation moving in and it's by Wednesday, you can see there, that is Storm Dudley moving through. Significant rain, snow over higher ground, and it's the winds that's going to be the main impact from this, not the precipitation. However, as we head through Wednesday, you see still a bit of snow over Scotland, and through Thursday, still have very strong winds from Storm Dudley, as that precipitation starts to slowly die away. And then we have to keep an eye all on this low pressure system in the far southwest, pushing up turning to heavy snow across parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland, the Midlands, Northern England, and again, all depends on the track of the storm. By 6 a.m., could be seeing heavy snow, and some areas could wake up to significant conditions for eventually that um, band does slowly clear away to our east, and we just go into wintry showers quite widely. Now, one thing I want to have a look at is why we're very uncertain with this, because if you have a look at dew points for Friday, uh, if we look at Thursday evening, you can see warm dew points pump into the south, 9, 10 degrees in the London area. You push 50, 100 miles further northwards, we're getting down to freezing dew points. Um, and that's the temperature contrast we're seeing, fueling the precipitation, fueling the winds, um, and that's what's causing this storm. And once again, if we have a look at the H and 50 HP temperatures, you can see 4 or 5 degrees, minus 5 degrees just further northwards. So that is what is fueling this storm. Um, and if we do have a look at the wind gusts for both Eunice, um, or both Dudley and Eunice, you can see both through front Wednesday, see those very strong gusts, 100 mile per hour gusts moving through Wednesday evening, westerly winds, and again, along where that amber zone is, across Northern England, Northern Ireland, and Southern Scotland. Significant winds, as I said, 
brief respite through Thursday evening. For early hours of Friday, you can see this bullseye of wind. And as, as I said, the winteriness and potentially the heaviest precipitation will be on the northern edge. The wind will be on the southern edge. So even though southern England is only seeing maybe some heavy rain for a period of time, no heavy snow or anything, could be seeing the strongest gusts. 70, 80 mile per hour gusts, even in land, which would be amber warning, potentially, for considering the infrastructure in around London, and not used to seeing winds in excess of normally 50 or 60 miles per hour, we could even be seeing a red warning, because remember, the, the warnings not always uh, are issued just for... Um, just for the the numbers, just not just for the wind speeds or the rainfall amounts, but where it's affecting. Um, if we're seeing 80 mile per hour winds over uninhabited areas, over the high grounds of mountains, we may see a yellow warning. But if we saw that in central London, we would most likely see an amber or red warning. So we've got to keep an eye on this. Um, and of course, this could upgrade or it could downgrade. Uh, and of course, we're hoping we do see some downgrades to this because this does look like a very severe spell of weather that could cause havoc right up and down the country with Storm Dudley, with its winds further northwards, Storm Eunice potentially with its winds further southwards, and then snow across the Midlands, Northern England, Southern Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Now, if we do look at the two meter temperatures, um, now you can see, we'll just briefly run through this. Um, you can see today temperatures were around 7, 8 degrees. So pretty chilly, but nothing too crazy cold or mild, really. Tonight, maybe a frost in a few spots, but nothing too crazy um, for Valentine's. I hope everyone has a great evening this evening. Um, Regardless of what you're doing, if you're spending time alone, I hope you have a good, good evening. If you're spending time with a loved one uh, or loved ones, I hope you, again, have a great evening. Beyond that, though, you can see um, through Tuesday afternoon, we do see temperatures, again, 7, 8 degrees, uh, maybe 10 degrees in a few spots, nothing too crazy. And then through Wednesday, as we see that storm approach, you see the temperature's actually really quite mild, 14 degrees in the south. We're seeing big, milder sector push in, um, but that cold air does sink southwards. And by Thursday, temperatures only around 7 or 8 degrees as those real big winds slowly start to die down before, as we head through early hours of Friday, we see Storm Eunice arrive as Storm Dudley clears 10, 11 degrees in the south, freezing across parts of North Midlands, Northern England. Um, that's where we could be seeing snow before that eventually clears. And by Friday evening, all areas dropping down to a frost. So looking quite cold to end the working week as Storm Eunice clears. Now, if we do have a look at the icon run, just have a look at a different perspective, what another model is showing. We'll just have a look at the precipitation spike types and wind gusts. Now, if we do run through, you can see heavy precipitation moving through early tomorrow morning, and then through Wednesday, we see uh, storm Dudley arrive. Uh, again, nothing too major in terms of precipitation with this storm, more likely the wind with that. And then we see storm Eunice arrive by early hours of Thursday, uh, or areas of Friday, significant snowfall, and I mean significant snowfall across parts of North Midlands, Northern England, Scotland, again, mainly over higher ground, but not exclusively, and you can see that snow line even getting down into potentially the Midlands, uh, Southern Midlands, maybe into Central Southern England, could see a few flakes, and on its back edge, some snow maybe even down into the East Anglia, and maybe the South, Again, sometimes the icon does overdo it a little bit, um, but does just show you what it is, what, what could be happening. And then for Saturday, another weather front bump into that cold air could be a snow to rain event. If we do actually have a look at the snow, you can see potential across parts of the Midlands, North England, Wales, 10 to 15 centimetres possible in a few spots, and widely maybe 2, 3, 4, 5 centimetres. So a couple inches of snow could be quite significant considering how poor this winter has been so far. Now, if you do have a look at the wind gusts, you can see through Thursday, we're seeing those 80, 90, 100 mile per hour winds across that amber zone. Pretty bang on now where that is going to happen. Now, beyond that, as we move through, we see again that bullseye of winds across central southern and southwest, southeast. Bit more offshore with that storm, uh, with storm Eunice placed slightly further southwards. So it just shows that exact positioning can make a huge difference. If that's rain snow lines a bit further northwards, and the systems further northwards, those 90, 100 mile per hour gusts could be more inland than they are here. So, yeah, it's um, it's uh, and you can see there 80, 90 mile per hour gusts in London, which I with that that came off um i would expect a red warning if i'm being totally honest uh, as in london we never really normally see anything above maybe 60 or 70 miles per hour really and then maybe 80 or 90 along the coast but for highly uh high areas with 
quite big infrastructure which could be damaged significantly by these winds um, and it's not used to it really by any means we could be seeing yes a amber or red warning for this so we need to really keep an eye out for what's happening uh, over the next few days with these storms before it eventually clears and we see potentially another severe low moving in for early hours of Saturday and again more strong winds could be another name storm and this is all because of the jet stream powering up now, if we do have a look at the GFS and GFS ensembles, we run through this quite quickly uh, as I want to dedicate a lot of video to the upcoming storms. You can see Storm Dudley and Storm Enis um, moving through, and you can really see that spinning up of the low pressure system um, through uh, through Friday with real big low um, uh, further northwards. So GFS has the um, Wind, uh, wind and snow a bit further northwards um, so we have to keep an eye on that and then more low pressure systems and if we just continue United Kingdom look you can just see loads of westerly bouts uh, loads of low pressure systems pushing in you can see beyond the end uh, towards the end of the run a bit of high pressure further southwards and eastwards but I'm not expecting anything too crazy maybe that storm track pushing a bit further northwards for a period of time now if we do have a look at the GFS ensemble you can see temperatures very much up and down over the next couple of weeks and as you can see we have colder air coming in by the end of this week but you can see it only hangs around for a day or two so I'm not expecting anything major with this um, uh, and yeah just generally quite a lot of up and down conditions very significant precipitation around for some and if we have a look at the 10 meter wind um, speed you can see some are showing very high wind speeds around the end of this week again all depends on the exact ensemble run uh, an operational run and of course we'll have to keep an eye on that but you can see very very strong winds over the next week in general um, even outside of the name storm so please do take care out there and do listen to the warnings um, as they could um, save lives uh, and save damage um, and livelihoods and injury or, or whatever that could be caused from this storm as Met Office naming it three, four, five days early, especially for Storm Eunice. It just shows you how severe these storms could be back to back with the wind and potential snow with it. Um, yeah, this could be uh, quite disruptive and, um, uh, and devastating the next sort of five days. So please do stay safe out there. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again tomorrow for another update on uh, these uh, these named storms.